in yesterday's session what we covered uh, we covered you know uh, how to create a meta chain and what are the different scheduling options uh, we have in the process chain so these points we covered in the yesterday session like uh, we cover and you know we learned about what is the difference between immediate start and then date and time you know after event but i, I didn't give any example on the after event but you know uh, we learned these things Mm -hmm. So yesterday what we did, uh, so this uh, meta chain, yesterday we triggered this chain a periodic, it means it is a scheduled job, a repetitive job. What is periodic job? It is a repetitive job. I given it for other period for every five minutes, right? And then I schedule this one. So now let's see like, you know, um, if we see this uh, log, okay, I didn't say, tell you what is log, right? So this is process chain and we schedule this. And at any point of time, if we want to see the log, log is nothing but the uh, processing of this process chain. Like when it got ran, you know, what time, is it successful or failure, all the things, you know, we call them as a log. You know, this is a symbol for the logs, log view. So if you want to go for the log view, select the chain and then click here and then right click on the chain, go to display logs. If you go to display log, what will happen? You can see by when it run and what time everything. So since we triggered this for every five minutes, if you see for every five minutes interval, this chain is getting triggered. Okay. So today also. And now if yesterday also, you know, whole day it got triggered a number of times. You see for every five minutes it got triggered. Okay. So now when coming to in this way, uh, now next is, so how to stop it? Because it is a test chain uh, for your, uh, you know, learning experience, I triggered it. But now I want to stop it because it is running continuously uh, for every five minutes uh, without any data also. Okay. Uh, and uh, all are green colors. So how to stop this chain? In order to stop this chain, again, double click on the sales chain. So whenever you double click on the chain, it will open it. You see some diff color difference is there here. Uh, when compared to a uh, you know normal chain there is no color here but when i go to this chain there is a color coding coming here which means it is telling these are already scheduled jobs are there okay so how can i check the scheduled job I, how can i get to know the next run day run time of the run date of this chain so go to execution and uh, go to and then next start if i go to this next start it will open the job okay uh, is the next job already finished and go to again click on next job and then right click here and then uh, uh, job details so if i go here the next job is 16 8 2022 and then 2016 but it is showing finished but uh, one second maybe i need to refresh my screen slash in So double click here, go to um, start. Yeah, you see if I go to next start, now it is showing released. So if I click here, uh, checkbox and go to job, job details. Here I can see when it is going to start in my next five minutes, 28, 21, it is going to start. Okay. But now what is my requirement is I am done with running this repeatedly. Now I want to stop this chain to run anymore. So how can I do it? By descheduling the chain. Scheduling means keeping it in the running state. Descheduling means making it stop. I need to remove from schedule. You see on the execution button, there is a remove from schedule option is there. If you go to this one, then system will remove it from the schedule. You see it gone. So no more, you know, it won't run anymore. Uh, now what I will do, so I will refresh my process chain by clicking on this arrow mark, go to refresh entire tree. It will be refreshed and if I go to again, go to option and then next start, you see there is no, it, the chain is not scheduled. Means whatever job it created for the next run, it got deleted because I descheduled this chain. Okay. So this is how to keep the chain in schedule and deschedule state. So when we do this kind of descheduling, whenever, you know, um, whenever system maintenance happening or uh, sometimes based upon our requirement, sometimes we may get a, uh, requirement to deschedule the chain mainly when when we when we are ready to move the transports to production a mass transports uh, like cut over coin cut over cut over is one of the word okay um, so when we moving uh, ma, you know huge number of changes from one system to production system at that time usually we will stop these chains okay so we may get this kind of requirement 
and if you want to put it back again into scheduling mode how you can put it back so again double click on this start right click on the start variant go to display variant and then you know go to edit mode of this one and go to edit conditions now you need to change the data because if you give the same date system won't accept here because it is past data now you need to tell again from when it it has to be started so generally i will delete this one and i will go for f4 help it will provide me the latest date and time also i will delete the time and then i will go to f4 help here and it will show the current system time so for example 20 20 uh, 32 let's take 32 and click on ok and periodic job settings will be still available so we no need to change anything if we want to run it for every five minutes but what I will do is instead of running every five minutes I will make it daily this time okay so by clicking on this daily button then click check save so that's it save and then check save so come back one step and now execute this process chain so no need to add to generally let's see execute this process chain so now what happened now this start variant got changed Um, so what I do here, um, here by clicking on this symbol, so one second slash and RSA, RSPC, display logs, Okay, because it is not activated, it is not showing uh, better if you know, but it is, if I go to double click on the chain and then uh, go to here, next start, if you see, you see, next start was already released. So it means whenever you see this job, then it means it's uh, scheduled. So this is, this gives you proof that you scheduled this chain properly and go to job details to see the diamond. So tomorrow I am expecting this to uh, run tomorrow, 2032, uh, today 2032 and then for daily ones. You see job frequency is one of the option here, it where it is showing daily. So daily at the same time it will start running this chain. Okay. So this is how to uh, schedule and deschedule and if you want to reschedule it back, this, uh, this is how we, we do it. Okay. And next thing what we need to, we are going to learn. Mm, yeah. So now next, uh, next step, go to mass data chain. So this is not in schedule straight. Okay. Now what we are going to do is uh, we need to learn some some you know important okay one second yeah uh, there are some some more points are there okay okay we, we need to let's finish the you know development all kind of you know development steps involved in this uh, you know process chain and then I will go to what are the important things that we need to learn in terms of monitoring a process chain in real time okay. So now what I will do is, uh, I will try to create another transactional process chain. Um, so for that I need one DTPM dot to this. So I am going to R7. So R7 info provider. So I need some more DTPs, you know, to make it run. So which one I can take it? <clears throat> okay. For example, these are the. Um, so um, what we can say? So this is one of the sales uh, cube type, I think. Yeah, sales cube type. Okay. So let's uh, for this one. Let's create another uh, one more process chain, and we'll learn the remaining topics here. Okay. So now I want to create a new chain under this one. Right click here, create process chain. So now provide the technical name of this chain. So what I'm going to give here is um, G tra G T D transactional data G P C underscore transactional data underscore sales. Okay, sales. Click on OK and go to start variant.
provide I always you know tsh underscore start so I will do the same on the long description also edit conditions and as of now I am making it as immediate and check save and check save come back click on ok yeah now we can come into the design screen now what is our next target our next target is to learn the remaining processes what we are left at last time so so far what we learned we learned so far how to include you know ttp and how to uh, add the activation step only these two so far we learned here but if you see here and and step r step also we learned here so we have and local meta chain also we covered so only these co we covered so far but there are multiple other things are there so which are important uh, yeah, not everything is important but we will go through few of the next uh, you know uh, important things here so what is this execute info package so just like our ddp if you have any info package to be executed you can give that info package here but remember one thing you cannot give a ODP which is loading from your flat file for example if, a, if there is a ODP which is loading data from your local system into a DSO then such kind of DTPs you cannot provide in the process chain process chain will accept only the you know um, files which are for example if the DTP is extracting data from application server into your ADSO that is fine but anything that is mapped to your local system process chain doesn't accept that, that kind of either info packages or DTPs. Okay, remember that point. So now next point is, you know, um, delete data. Okay, so sometimes, you know, we may get a requirement. Okay, so what kind of requirement? So I have a ADS flow and I am loading data into it. So every time before loading data, I will delete the data from the target and I will freshly reload the data. So I may come across this kind of situation. Okay. So then in such cases, what, how, what we can do in our process chain, we have a step called, you know, delete target. Okay. You know, where is that one? Second. Complete deletion of target contents. You see, complete deletion of target contents is one of the step. So, if you want to use this step, then double click on this one. So, you need to provide, you know, um, create new variant for your uh, step. For example, my requirement is, you know, uh, to execute, uh, to delete this content. This request was lastly loaded on 2022-0610 and it fetched four records. And let's see what is my source. My source is nothing but uh, my source is also in another area, you know, another area so. So is it contains data now to do testing? Yeah, this contains four records. So now I can happily, you know, uh, use this example. So now I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create now a variant which completely deletes data from this target and um, what I do? Mm. And then reload data from my source into target. Okay. So for this purpose, what I need to do, I need to take the technical name of my target object. Okay. SR underscore sales cube. So now I am going to create a variant here for this, you know, complete deletion of data target. For this, I am going to create a variant. So delete underscore uh, content. If you want, you can give elaboratively, but uh, anything is fine. Okay. And whenever we create such kind of things in, in our real time projects, so there will be a naming convention document to be created. So for all PC variants, for example, maybe G underscore V PC, where this kind of naming convention, you know, they may give. Okay. Delete content, right? Um, So the process chain variant delete content from the this one. Okay, I am going to give or else I can give write a description delete content from this one. So not on that thing only my queue areas for that. So I am giving you know uh, description in this way, providing technical name and description in a reasonable way is always remember. Okay, uh, important. So object, so now from which type of object I am going to drop data. SAP is providing, you know, flexibility to delete data from ADS flow, cube, hybrid provider, data store object, you know, um, 
DTP info executable. I don't know why these two, how, how we use these two. But we can delete content from the data target. So I can use currently ADS4. And from here, I can, you know, search for my ADS4. So what is my ADS4 name? Uh, this is my ADS4 name. Click on OK. Somewhere. I think this one, right? SR underscore sales cube. Uh, yeah, this one. And click on OK. So it came. And now you see also delete all dimension table content, also delete analysis information. So dimension table is a concept coming in the cube, uh, ne, cube uh, sorry, in the cube uh, topic. So but currently we are not dealing with our regular cube. So we don't need this checkbox here. So simply I'm clicking on save button so that this variant will be saved and then click on OK button. Now it came here. So now what happened exactly? So but this whenever I executed this process chain using this particular variant, now data, whole data from my target is going to be removed. Okay. Uh, and now activate this process chain. So we, before act, you know adding further DTP, first let me try to run this process chain and see. Okay. How exactly it is working. I'm going to my sales, you know, TD chain and then clicking on execute button. So since I given the start variant as an immediate start, it will start triggering. Um, so you see now if I, you see, now the request is gone. So even if I go to filter, filter by time for the, you know, all no risk time restrictions, I don't have any request in my target. Okay. So this is how, you know, how it is working. So now we are clear with how this is happening. For example, if you rerun, um, if you rerun uh, again this process chain, it won't give any error. If even though that doesn't have any data, it will do one more time the same kind of activity and it will be result in the successful. That's it. If you see now I executed two times, two times it was successful. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change mode of this process chain. Now this time I am going to add this DTP here. So I am taking this DTP and this DTP is a top cube which doesn't have any activation. So settings, default chains. I will go for, you know, suggestions. If it is there, it will come like this. And then data targets, uh, load process, go for the DTP edition. Okay, here, this, that's it. Now we are done here successful only when the delete content is successful then only i wish to add this and go to next step that's why i selected the green one now activate this process chain and try to run this process chain now what will happen this again will try to delete data from the target and once it is successful it will start loading data into the um, uh, you see whenever you see it in the yellow color it means currently this node is processing okay so if it is successful it will turn into green color and you see if I am doing refresh here on the top only right side the design of this process chain only will get refreshed but you know the status of the process chain here it won't refresh automatically so in order to refresh this one what you need to do you need to click on this particular other logs and go to you know yesterday and today select any one here and then click on ok then this will get refreshed and you can see this uh, you know green color now I hope it is clear. So in this way, we can, uh, you know, check the logs here. Now, if I go to my ADS4 and do MQ refresh here, you see, I got a request which is loaded today's date. Okay. So this is how you to use is this, uh, um, you know, delete the data from the content. So this is one of the regular option which we use in our day to day life. Okay. Next, what was the next important request here? Delete overlapping request from cube, delete overlapping request from the data store object.